what are the physics of Captain America's shield? Let's throw ourselves into this. Science behind Captain America Captain America's shield is one of the most iconic images of comic book history. It's undergone several stages and shapes, but most know the circular disc that he carries in most of the comics and the current movies. What makes his shield so special, aside from its bulletproof nature, is its ability to act like a boomerang. When, when Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who chose to oppose his shield must yield. Well, yes, but the shield will also return to the thrower after being initially thrown. One of the greatest jokes and greatest mysteries of the Captain America character is how this works. On the surface, it looks impossible. But is it? Is there any science to Captain America's shield? Well, to figure out if Cap's mighty shield is able to curve in a returning motion in the air, we need to find objects in the real world that do this. Of course, this brings us to the ever-famous boomerang. A boomerang is basically two wooden wings stuck together, and when thrown a certain way, it will spin through the air a certain distance, and then return to the thrower. Seems magical. In fact, many native people have described it as such. But it's not magic propelling this thing. It's physics. First off, a boomerang needs to be aerodynamic. We see that here, again, it's basically two wooden wings, and these wings are very important. A wing of a boomerang needs to have a certain slant to it that allows for more lift. Lift, in this sense, basically means the same as what an airplane wing means. The wing is built so that, as it moves, more air passes quicker under the wing, and therefore creates a sort of air wave that the wing surfs on, lifting it into the air and carrying it further. Both sides of the boomerang do this. Now, that isn't all boomerang needs to work its magic. A boomerang is also built to have a gyroscopic effect. That may sound complicated, but once I break it down for you, I think you'll get the hang of it. Basically, the gyroscopic effect makes it so that an object's axis of rotation can shift. Think of an axis of rotation in the same sense as the center of gravity of an object, like with a wheel, for example. On bicycles, cars, etc., wheels are held from the tip top of the wheel and are obviously also being held down by the bottom ground that they touch, as seen here. This makes the axis of rotation for the wheel very physically uniform, as it has no other way to go due to the forces being exerted onto it. Perhaps a better explanation is on this webpage, which is more in-depth and I recommend you guys go check out if you want to understand more. This example here is pretty much perfect. The Earth rotates in a fairly uniform fashion, but if we were to put giant thrusters on the sides of the Earth, but still spin it the way it normally does, we may actually change the axis of rotation. Without anything to hold the Earth down like a car, bike, or wheel, the rotation will, quite frankly, shift. Much like Earth, on a boomerang or boomerang-like device, these forces aren't being exerted onto it. The boomerang has nothing to hold it down, and it has sides that are, in some sense, making the air around it change its axis of rotation. With nothing to hold it back, a boomerang will eventually shift its axis of rotation enough to cause it to reverse. This is caused by, in a nutshell, a reversal of momentum. See, the top of the boomerang is thrown to constantly spin the direction it was thrown, while the bottom will spin the opposite direction. The top tends to get more lift this way, and thus carries the boomerang further. However, because of the way it's built, it will tilt just enough to reverse its momentum, and thus the boomerang returns to the thrower. Now, if we look at Captain America's shield clearly, nothing like that is present on it. The shield isn't built to be aerodynamic, it doesn't have anything to uniformly change its axis of rotation, nothing. Or does it? It's ironic that Cap's shield looks kind of like a frisbee, because there are ways to throw frisbees that mirror a boomerang. If you were to throw a frisbee at about a 45 degree angle up to a 90 degree angle, and a slight wind coming your way is present, you will get the effect that a frisbee doesn't fall straight to the ground, but that it comes right back to you. This is because the top of the frisbee is getting exposed to more wind and air than the bottom while in flight, but as soon as it starts to fall, that changes. Since the bottom comes up inward, it creates what almost acts like a bed of air under it, or a wave of air that it surfs on, which creates more resistance towards gravity. We just brought this full circle. The wind is also pushing this frisbee, and if the wind is facing you, you'll see that your frisbee does indeed return. Of course, you'll have to make sure you throw it carefully for this to happen. The frisbee must remain flat, otherwise you'll end up with something that looks more like Roswell than a boomerang toss. 
So in conclusion, it is possible for Captain America's shield to return to the thrower, if it's thrown upwards, and the wind is right, and it's thrown correctly. But stuff like this, this, and this just doesn't work out in physics. I guess Spidey has a point. That thing does not obey the laws of physics at all. Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed the episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment on what superhero super villain you guys will see me do next. God, I'm getting good at saying that, but I'm saying it a little bit too fast. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was, uh, it was pretty simple to do. It was pretty, like, um, well, you know what? No, it wasn't really simple because the explaining gyroscopic effect is kind of confusing. I'm still not entirely sure, uh, how to describe it, but I, I, like, I get what it causes, but I'm not entirely sure the process of how that happens, I guess you could say. Uh, so I myself am still trying to wrap my head around it, really. I think I've got it down in the video. I hope I do. Uh, I hope you guys understood it well. If, if I have made a mistake, please let me know in the comments because I want to know if I've made a mistake or not. Um, but yeah, guys, hope you guys know this episode of Science Behind Superheroes. Next week, I will be doing a Spider-Man video again. Finally, I'm sure a lot of you guys are dying for that. So stay tuned for that, guys. And uh, yeah, have a good week.